Because the material in the student notes is so thorough, I'm only going to highlight the major points you need to consider for this unit. We will begin this video with a discussion of the major points that you need to know about the different types of blood vessels. As you have learned from the student notes, there are three types of blood vessels, the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries. Structurally, arteries have thick, elastic walls. Because the first blood vessel that blood enters as it is pumped out of the heart is the artery, the arteries are under an extreme amount of pressure. Therefore, the walls of the arteries have to be strong enough to withstand this high blood pressure and elastic to allow for the expansion and recoil each time blood is pumped out of the heart. The function of the artery then is to carry blood away from the heart. Compared to the arteries, veins have thinner walls than arteries. As the function of veins is to carry blood back to the heart, they are furthest away from the strongest force of blood being pumped out of the heart and therefore are not under such high blood pressure. Veins also have one-way valves to prevent blood from pooling in the extremities as blood is moved back to the heart against the force of gravity. Muscle contraction also helps the veins to push blood back toward the heart. The walls of the capillaries, which are the smallest blood vessels in the body, are only one cell thick. Because nutrients and waste exchange occurs between the cells of the body and the capillaries, it is important that the walls of the capillaries are only one cell layer thick, as this allows for the easy exchange of nutrients and waste across the capillary wall. If you are asked to describe the structure of the capillaries, it is not good enough to say that they have thin walls. You must clarify that the wall of the capillaries is only one cell thick. A graph compares the velocity of blood, blood pressure, and total cross-sectional area of the arteries, veins, and capillaries. There are a number of questions that can be asked about this diagram, so it is important that students understand it. Looking at the first graph charted in the diagram, one can see that blood pressure is highest in the arteries and drops off as blood moves to the arterioles, to the capillaries, to the venules, and finally the veins. This graph clearly shows that blood pressure drops as blood moves further from the outgoing pump of the heart. The second graph in the diagram shows that velocity, or the speed of blood, decreases as blood moves from the arteries to the arterioles to the capillaries. The velocity begins to increase as blood moves from the capillaries to the venules to the veins. As you can see from the graph, blood moves the slowest through the capillaries, which is important as the exchange of nutrients and waste occurs between the capillaries and the cells of the body. But what causes the velocity of blood to increase as it moves from the capillaries to the venules and then to the veins? There are two reasons for this increase. First, we can see from the third graph charted in the diagram that the cross-sectional area is greatest in the capillaries. It makes sense then that as blood flows from a huge cross-sectional area into a smaller cross-sectional area, this will increase the velocity of blood. Secondly, muscle contraction helps to increase the velocity of blood in the veins and push it back toward the heart. 